With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour One. You're welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. I am a professional on occasion. <laughs> Welcome. The phone number, if you want to be on the program, 877-973-7425. I've got to go back to this clip from yesterday. This is painful. This was a mother who testified two days ago in Congress about her sons. I play this. I didn't intend to restart the program today talking about this issue again, and yet I must in light of Merrick Garland's testimony. Listen to this mother. If we had Chinese troops lining up along our southern border with weapons aimed at our people. You damn well know you would do something about it. This is a war. Act like it. Do something. That lady lost two sons to fentanyl. Marjorie Taylor Greene, the adulteress from Georgia, blamed Joe Biden for this woman's son's death and said it was Joe Biden's fault. The sons died when Donald Trump was president of the United States. When Joe Biden was asked to respond, he blamed Donald Trump. Can we get past the blame game? Our kids, 100,000 a year, Precisely last year, 107,375 Americans died from fentanyl. And you've got Marjorie Taylor Greene blaming Joe Biden for deaths that happened when Donald Trump was president. You've got Joe Biden saying, well, it was Donald Trump's fault. We're doing, we're, we're doing something. And you're not. You're not doing anything. This is a bipartisan problem. The, the, the number of people coming across the border right now may be more than when Donald Trump was president, but the fentanyl was coming across when Donald Trump was president. That woman's two sons died when Trump was president. I'm so damn tired of both sides blaming each other for cheap political points, for fundraising emails that tie up my email inbox instead of actually dealing with the problem. This is Merrick Garland testifying to the United States Senate yesterday. This is the Attorney General of the United States. In 2022 and for the first couple of months of 2023, DOJ has announced charges against 34 individuals for blocking access to or vandalizing abortion clinics. And there have been over 81 reported attacks. Uh, That's the the wrong clip. This is the right clip. Fentanyl deaths uh, are more than gun and accident deaths combined in the United States. Did you know that? Yes, sir. I mean, this is, how would you describe the fentanyl problem in America? It's a horrible epidemic, uh, but it's an epidemic that's been unleashed on purpose uh, by the Sinaloa um, and the new generation Jalisco cartels. Let's just stop and absorb that for a moment. It's a horrible epidemic. It kills more people than car wrecks and gun violence combined. And the question is, what are we going to do about it? under current law, fentanyl loses its Schedule One status by the end of the year. You oppose that, I, I assume. I certainly do. Fentanyl, all fentanyl-related um, okay. um, drugs should be scheduled. Do you permanently support mandatory scheduled. minimums for people dealing in fentanyl? I think we already have mandatory minimums for people. Do you think they should be increased? Um, I, I think we have, we have more than enough um, ability now to uh, attack this problem. Well, would you agree with me? Whatever we have is not working. Well, I, Whatever I, we're doing is not working. I, I agree with that because of the number of deaths yeah, that you so, pointed out. So, so the, just keep an open mind that what we got on the books is not working. What we got on the books is not working. That was a United States Senator questioning Merrick Garland who says this is, is intentional. But yet this is also, listen to this exchange with Merrick Garland. Mexican drug cartels, should they be 
uh, designated foreign terrorist organizations under U.S. law? Yeah, I think it's the, the same answer I gave before. They are already uh, designated in any number of ways and sanctioned by the Treasury. Would you oppose some of us trying to make them foreign terrorist organizations? I wouldn't oppose it, but again, um, I, I want to point out there are diplomatic concerns. We need the assistance of Mexico in this and designating. Is Mexico helping us effectively with our fentanyl? Problem? They are helping us, but they could do much more. There's no question about that. Well, okay. If I use profanity, I get in trouble. This is the Attorney General of the United States testifying before the United States Senate that because of diplomatic reasons with the country he admits is not really helping us as much as they could, we should not designate these organizations terrorist organizations. I want to go back to the earlier clip. Listen to the beginning of this clip. Fentanyl deaths uh, are more than gun and accident deaths combined in the United States. Did you know that? Yes, sir. I mean, this is, how would you describe the fentanyl problem in America? It's a horrible epidemic, okay. uh, but it's an epidemic that's been unleashed on purpose. Unleashed on purpose. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, the Attorney General of the United States in testimony with questions from one member of the United States Senate says fentanyl is terrible. It is unleashed on purpose. It is unleashed on purpose by drug cartels. He names the drug cartels. And then he says, but we can't really name them foreign terrorists because we need Mexico's help. And then concedes Mexico is not actually helping us. What are we going to do? We've got to fight these people, 107,375. That's the number of Americans who were killed last year by fentanyl. 107,375. Why are we not going to war? If Al-Qaeda killed 107,375 Americans, we would be blowing them to smithereens throughout Africa and the Middle East and Asia. Why are we not launching missiles at the drug cartels that the Attorney General of the United States are saying willfully and intentionally, willful and intentional targeting of Americans with fentanyl, willful and intentional. If Al-Qaeda willfully and intentionally target American citizens, we would blow them up. Why are we not blowing up the drug cartels? There are portions of southern Mexico where the Mexican government can't even go because they're scared of the drug cartels. And the Mexican president, given the history of Mexico, he's probably on the take with the Mexican drug cartels. It wouldn't surprise me one bit if he had ties to the Mexican drug cartels. In fact, there's a lot of credible speculation that he does. And our government, our attorney general, he's rounding up pro-lifers who protest in front of abortion clinics, but he's too freaked out about diplomatic ties with the Mexican government. He says it's doing nothing to designate the drug cartels as terrorist organizations. There's an op-ed from John Feely and Joaquin Villalobos in the Politico today. In the 1980s, one of us was a guerrilla commander fighting to overthrow an unjust Central American government. The other was a U.S. Marine pilot. Today, we are close colleagues who have dedicated our lives to strengthening democratic peace and governance in the Western Hemisphere. Some things change, but others don't. One thing that hasn't changed is the nature of organized crime. It is soulless, cruel, and the antithesis of a peaceful democratic existence. And organized crime has taken its brutality to a new level with its latest commodity, fentanyl. The drug's destruction is well known by now, yet the numbers are still stunning. Out of the 107,375 people in the United States who died of drug overdoses and drug poisonings over the course of the year, 67% involves synthetic opioids like fentanyl, according to the CDC. This drug, illegally manufactured mostly in Mexico, is the scourge of police departments and hospital emergency rooms across the country. One tool to combat fentanyl has been overlooked. If members of Congress or the Biden administration really want to take on this deadly drug, there's an opportunity to seriously debilitate the organized criminal syndicates that make it. 
Secretary of State Blinken should designate the narco syndicates as foreign terrorist organizations. Using his existing authority, Blinken could make the determination that these organized criminal cartels are, according to the law, foreign organizations engaged in terrorist activity that threatens the security of U.S. nationals or national security of the United States. By designating producers of of fentanyl as foreign terrorist organizations, U.S. federal and state law enforcement bureaucracies have expanded power to seize assets of U.S. citizen collaborators of the cartels. They could be prosecuted under terrorism statutes and given stiffer sentences. Let me put this all in perspective for you. Let me put in perspective what we're dealing with with the fentanyl crisis the President of the United States was willing to take a 1990 uh, or ni- uh, 2003 law related to the war on terror and use it to bail out the student loans of millions of Americans. He was willing to take a novel interpretation of a pre-existing law in order to bail out student loans of people. And it was a law whose authority the president had previously previously said he had no power to use. What this president is not willing to do is take a very clear law that very clearly gives him the authority to designate the drug cartels as terrorist organizations. According to the attorney general, it's diplomatic issues with Mexico that are the problem. Why should we care about diplomatic issues with a country that's not doing what they could do to help us solve this problem and frankly can't do what they need to do to solve this problem? If the United States government designated the drug cartels as foreign terrorist organizations, they could domestically go after the truck drivers, the warehouse operators, the storehouse operators, the accountants, the lawyers, the bankers, and the street-level dealers inside the United States who are working with the drug cartels. They could go after them far more easily at state and federal levels with far more resources and throw them in prison. Do you really think the Mexican drug cartels aren't using lawyers in this country, that they aren't using bankers in this country, that they aren't using distributors in this country? They've got storehouses, warehouses, and dealers all over this country. My next door neighbor before he was carted off to prison was one of the people helping the drug cartels. This dude lived on the other side. We had two wooded lots and on the other side was this house. One day the police swarmed my house and my wife thought I had said something on radio and they were there to protect us from crazies. No, they were waiting to do a raid on the house next door. The guy had been tied to a tractor trailer full of meth and cocaine and God knows what else. They were growing marijuana and his wife was sending the kids to go to unlocked cars in our neighborhood and steal guns and file the serial numbers off of them. True story. That happened in suburbia. You use the foreign terrorist designation and suddenly it's easier easier to go after all those people. My fellow Americans, my dear listeners, if Al-Qaeda killed 107,375 Americans, we would be waging all-out holy warfare against them. They would have nowhere to hide on planet Earth. They could not hide in the shadows of the jungles. They could not hide in the shade of the caves. They could not hide anywhere in the world. We would hunt them down and kill them. Why are we not doing that to the narco-terrorists who have killed 107,375 Americans in the last year? Why are we not hunting these terrorists down and killing them? Why are we so concerned with the sensibilities and diplomatic ties of a Mexican government in the pocket of the drug cartels who won't actually do what it takes to help us? Why are we more concerned with diplomatic niceties than dead Americans? That is not a problem of Joe Biden. That is a problem of multiple organ- multiple presidencies. Donald Trump was pushed to do this and didn't do it either. Joe Biden has been pushed to do this and hasn't done it either. It is time. 
It is time for the presidents of the United States to take this seriously, secure the border, build a wall, declare these people terrorists, and bomb them out of existence. So my kid has a queen-size bed. We've got a king-size bed. We got him bull and branch sheets, and he's used them. He had, like, kid sheets, and now he's old enough. He doesn't want the, the action figure sheets anymore. Well, we got lost because, I mean, the sheets look like our sheets, except they're queen-size sheets, and they got put in our closet, and the kid was in despair. We got him bull and branch sheets. They've gotten softer and softer, and he's like, where are my real sheets? He refused to sleep until we found the real sheets because— they're that soft. They're that good. They're made with a 100% organic cotton thread. They get softer in every wash. You can stay cozy all winter long with a set of bull and branch sheets. They really are that good. We have them on multiple beds in our house. My goodness. my Seriously, my kid, uh, he's finally like, my sheets are for kids. I'm, I'm grown up now. And uh, it's just a, a step of quality above what he had. And now he's like, can't sleep without these sheets. They're designed to feel incredible for all sleepers. They're made without toxins. They're free of pesticides, formaldehyde, other chemicals. They fit the deepest mattress too, which I love because we have a very thick mattress on our bed and it fits. It doesn't like bunch up and then snap off in the middle of the night when you roll over. You can get 15% off your forced order Bull and Branch sheets when you use promo code ERIC at bowlandbranch.com. Exclusions apply. See site for details. That's Bull and Branch, B O L L A N D Branch.com. The promo code is ERIC, E R I C K. Hi there. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877 973 7425. Should you wish to be on the program, I, again, did not intend to start this program a second day in a row talking about fentanyl. But Merrick Garland's testimony just infuriated me. The whole idea that uh, we should be worried about diplomatic niceties with Mexico at this point is bizarre. But on top of that, this is his exchange. This is the one I accidentally started playing with with Mike Lee to begin with on uh, prosecuting pro-lifers versus the Jane's Revenge people. Listen to this. In 2022 and for the first couple of months of 2023, DOJ has announced charges against 34 individuals for blocking access to or vandalizing abortion clinics. And there there have been over 81 reported attacks on pregnancy centers, 130 attacks on Catholic churches since the leak of the Dobbs decision, and only two individuals have been charged. So how do you explain this disparity uh, uh, by reference to anything other than politicization of what's happening there? The FACE Act applies equally to uh, efforts to um, uh, damage, uh, blockade uh, um, 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 clinics, whether a pregnant uh, uh, resource, uh, whether they are a pregnancy resource center uh, or whether they are an abortion center. It applies equally in both cases, and we apply the law equally. Um, I will say you are quite right. There are many more prosecutions with respect uh, to the um, um, blocking of the uh, um, of the abortion centers, but that is generally because they are those actions are taken in, uh, with photography at the time um, uh, during the daylight, and uh, seeing the person who did it is uh, quite easy. Um, the, those who are attacking the pregnancy resources centers, uh, which is a, a horrid thing to do, are doing this at night um, in the dark. We have put full resources on this. Uh, we have uh, uh, asked, uh, put uh, um, uh, rewards out for this. Um, the Justice Department and the FBI have made uh, outreach to Catholic um, and other uh, uh, organizations. So it's because the crimes from Jane's Revenge happen at night, it's, it's harder to go after them. But it's real easy to go after the Christians who have uh, protested outside abortion clinics. You should note thus far now uh, every single one that Merrick Garland's team has prosecuted for protesting outside abortion clinics has been found not guilty by a jury. Uh, great use of resources there, Merrick Garland, and can't use resources to do anything about the fentanyl crisis. The priorities of this administration. I, I Look, I, I try very, very hard and get hate mail from some listeners for trying to be even-handed with the fentanyl situation because it is a bipartisan problem. It is not just this president. But my goodness gracious, 
that they would spend so much time doing these prosecutions that juries then found the people not guilty and not use resources on the fentanyl situation is absolutely mind-numbingly insane. Hello there. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425. I want to talk about the Fox News situation. Uh, Testimony from Rupert Murdoch has come out in bits and pieces. And I I wrote about it this morning. If if you text Eric, E-R-I-C-K, to 33777 you can get uh my my morning piece that i wrote and but i i, I want to there, there was a quote it's kind of funny how it transpired not red or blue it, it is green I, i'll get there uh, but i i, I want to start with what i wrote this morning because i still actually get some angry emails from from people who just they can't believe me um One of my frustrations with life these days is I often feel like I've got to be counter-programming for other people on the right who just are unscrupulous in what they say, and so much of it isn't true, and I've got to push back on it because I really do think my side should be better and we should be more grounded in truth, and one of those things involves Newsweek, which are Newsmax, rather, which I've talked about in the past, that uh, Newsmax had a bunch of conservatives out there claiming that it had been taken off DirecTV because it was censorship. They didn't like having a right-wing network on there. Never mind they replaced Newsmax with Bill O'Reilly. You're not supposed to think deeply about the stuff. You're just supposed to accept what people say. And, you know, Ted Cruz and others blasted DirecTV for doing it, and it simply isn't true. I turned down money, a lot of money, Newsmax wanted to put an ad on this program and I was having nothing to do with it because it's not true. And I know some of you think it's true and I can't disabuse you of the notion, but for those of you who are willing to listen to reason here, you know why DirecTV takes MSNBC? It takes MSNBC, which does not get a lot of viewers, but it takes it because it's owned by Comcast. And DirecTV is required to take MSNBC by Comcast if it wants CNBC, USA Channel, the Golf Channel, Sci-Fi Channel, E, Bravo, Telemundo, and more. If DirecTV wants to take apart the Comcast package and select the channels it wants, Comcast charges more money. And DirecTV wants the USA Network because the USA Network is the most watched cable news channel after Fox News and sometimes dominates Fox. USA and Fox are the top two cable channels in America. And DirecTV can't get the USA Network unless it also is willing to take MSNBC. DirecTV takes CNN because CNN is owned by Warner Brothers Discovery. DirecTV has to take CNN if it wants to take Discovery Channel, TLC, Animal Planet, OWN, Food Network, Cooking Channel, HGTV, TBS, TNT, True TV, Turner Classic Movies, the Cartoon Network, and also, by the way, HBO. DirecTV has to take CNN. It's a requirement from Warner Brothers. It doesn't get to pick and choose. If DirecTV wanted to pick and choose and say, nah, we want HGTV, we don't want TNT, we don't want CNN, well, Warner Brothers Discovery has a lot of clout and they can charge a lot more money. DirecTV gets CNN with all these other networks and as a result has a lot of programming and gets them at a discount. Warner Brothers Discovery has that clout. The DirecTV takes Fox News because Fox News is the most watched television channel out there. And it comes with Fox Business, it comes with Fox Sports, and then importantly, Fox owns a lot of local TV stations around the country, and their local transmission rights, they're required to be carried by DirecTV locally. Your local TV station has to be carried by DirecTV. Fox owns a lot of them, and it can charge all sorts of fees to DirecTV, but cuts a deal by carrying Fox News, Fox Business, and Fox Sports. And then there's Newsmax, which isn't coupled with anything else. Newsmax wasn't coupled with any other major packaging. So Newsmax gave itself to DirecTV for free. 
This year, Newsmax decided it wanted DirecTV to start paying for it. And DirecTV said, well, you've been given your channel to us for free, and you've got a live streaming platform that you let people take for free. We're not paying you for something they can get elsewhere. Well, Newsmax said, wait, 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 we're going to start paying people. We're going to start making people pay for that live stream, too. And DirecTV says, we don't care. You, you got nothing else to offer us. DirecTV is financially in hard times. DirecTV, AT&T is carving it out, spinning it off as a private company because cord cutters are having a devastating impact on the financials of a company that is dependent on transmission of cable via satellite. It's very expensive to launch and operate those satellites. DirecTV has a lot of costs. It's burdening AT&T's bottom line. They're going to be spun off. They do not want to pay for a TV channel that they've been given for free. And so what do they do? They drop Newsmax and they put on the first, which has Bill O'Reilly. You cannot plausibly, credibly, honestly, and sincerely, unless you're a moron, claim that this is a censorship issue when they swapped out Newsmax for Bill O'Reilly and Dana Lash. But some people want to believe it because their political leaders lie to them and they believe the lies. I did not want their money because I was not going to lie to you. I at least am willing to not take people's money if I don't believe it's true. That's not patting me on the back. It's a deep frustration that others are willing to lie to you. And many of you are willing to believe the lie and get mad at me for telling you the truth. And that gets me to Rupert Murdoch and Fox News. I know I worked for Fox for five years. They paid me every week. Only company I've ever worked for where I got a paycheck every single week. Not every two weeks, literally every Friday, direct deposit. I love the network and a lot of people there and have tremendous respect for Rupert Murdoch. When you read his deposition, the quotes that we have, turns out he never believed the 2020 election was stolen by the Dominion voting machines. There were problems in 2020. Undisputably, there were problems in 2020. And, and a, a friend of mine in Congress says the Democrats stole it fair and square. They went to court. They changed rules. Uh, and Republicans lost in court, put bad lawyers by good lawyers, and the good lawyers won. But it wasn't the voting machines. There are still some people who are convinced the voting machines are what did it for Joe Biden, which isn't true. I mean, we know in Georgia, for example, uh, they did a statewide recount of the printouts of the ballots, and they all matched. So you got to presume that uh, they printed out the ballots and they rigged the ballots and changed the ballots and people didn't look at their paper ballot to make sure it was right and they just passed it through the scanner. And if so, that's their fault. It's not the machine's fault. What we have found in the Fox case, though, is that in the depositions of individuals and in text messages between like Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity, Laura Ingram and others, they thought Sidney Powell was nuts. Many of the producers and executives, they did not believe the Dominion voter loss, uh, Dominion voting machine claims one single bit. But they were scared that their audience would flee to Newsmax. And so they allowed the people to keep coming on television and making the claims. Bill Sammons was the Washington bureau chief for Fox News. He was pushed out because of uh, Fox News' decision to call Arizona early. And he texted Chris Steyerwalt, who was also pushed out because Fox News accurately called Arizona, said, it's remarkable how weak ratings make good journalists do bad things. That's what Bill Salmon said. Rupert Murdoch did not believe the Dominion voting machine claims Sidney Powell and Rudy Giuliani were making, but he let him keep coming on air. Now, look, I think Fox's public rebuttal is probably the best they can do. They can claim this is about free speech, and they have an argument here. Their argument is that these are the claims the president's team were making on air, off air, on social media, and everywhere. They had an obligation to let them come on and make their claims. And you can't tell them they have to challenge and push back. They, they, they allow them to make their claims. The problem, though, is that there is evidence some Fox reporters did push back on the claims, and Fox's executives disciplined those reporters. One reporter in particular put up a fact-checking tweet of a claim Donald Trump made about the Dominion voting system machines, and her bosses made her delete the tweet. In 1964, the Supreme Court ruled in the New York Times versus Sullivan that public figures, and Dominion's a public figure in this case, well-known entity, 
can't recover damages without showing actual malice. Now, a lot of people hear actual malice, and they think mean, bad, awful intent. That's not true. Here's what the court said actual malice meant in these First Amendment cases. The constitutional guarantees require a federal rule that prohibits a public official from recovering damages for a defamatory falsehood relating to his official conduct unless he proves the statement was made with actual malice, that is, with knowledge that it was false or with reckless disregard of whether it was false or not. The Fox executives clearly had knowledge that the statements being made were false. They admitted in their text messages. They admitted in their depositions. They didn't believe it. Their claim is that they weren't making them. Trump's team was making them, and it was newsworthy. And, you know, a lot of the Fox haters out there are like, ah, they're screwed. They're t-. I don't know that they actually are. They have a valid claim, I think, as a media organization that we, Fox News, we weren't making these claims. We were just allowing the Trump team to make the claims. It's what they were saying everywhere anyway. I don't think it's as cut and dry as some people want to say it was. I don't really believe that uh, there are so many people who hate Fox News and they're like, oh, yeah, they're, they're screwed. I don't know that they actually are. Even though it's clear Fox executives knew the statements were false, they're right. These are the statements Donald Trump's team was making. Why not allow them to be aired on television so people could see it? The problem, however, is that Fox reprimanded, corrected or disciplined or otherwise pushed reporters to not fact check the claims. That could be the liability here. What's so funny, though, is it goes back to that quote I told you about. It's not red or blue. It's green. A lot of the media said, aha, see, Rupert Murdoch said that, that that it's all about the money. That's why he kept Mike Lindell coming on TV. It's It's about the green. That's not actually Rupert Murdoch's quote. So many members of the media who say Fox got stuff wrong, mischaracterized stuff, and allowed things that weren't true to come on air said that's Rupert Murdoch's quote. That's not. If you actually read the transcript, which I have, that was a characterism, a character, the characterization that Dominion's lawyers made about why Fox News continued to allow Mike Lindell to advertise on Fox News. They were allowing him to come on and make his crazy claims. They began to rein him in, but they kept the advertising dollars rolling in. And Dominion's lawyer says, essentially, so what you're saying is it's not red or blue, it's green. And Murdoch says, yes, it's the green. Reporters are attributing Dominion's lawyer's statements to Rupert Murdoch, which is funny how many reporters are upset about what Fox did and they're getting their own reporting wrong. Now, the moral of the story here is this. Fox got scared. Lachlan Murdoch testified that the ratings dive kept him up at night. Donald Trump was waging war on Fox News, urging people to go to uh, Newsmax. Newsmax's ratings were surging, and Fox got scared. So it decided to allow a bunch of people to come on television and make a bunch of claims the Fox executives thought were lies because Fox's base believed the lies. And they said over and over again, It was respecting their audience. We're going to respect our audience. What they actually meant was we're going to tell our audience what they want to hear. And they were going to tell the audience what the audience wanted to hear because they were afraid of what it would do to Fox's ratings if they told the truth. And I just, I don't know, I turned down a five-figure ad deal because I thought it was better to give up the money than tell you guys something that I didn't think was true. I'd probably be a whole lot richer if I just went with the went with the. Uh, let, me, let me tell you about survival foods now, and and I'll, I'll you know I don't want to. I had a big meeting with the advertisers the other day. Says I, I don't want to do super beats. I don't want to do survival foods. It's it's not my thing. I don't use them. I I I was pressured greatly pressured by my flagship station at one point a couple of years ago to take an ad campaign, and they would have paid a super premium 
And I said, no, I, I do not like this company. I do not want to take this ad. I do not. I have a relationship with my listeners I don't want to burn. And this is the problem for Fox. Fox has a relationship with its listeners. And by telling the listeners what they wanted to hear and the Fox executives believing it was a lie, but they needed to advance the lie to keep the listeners, they weren't really respecting their audience. They weren't. They were lying to their audience in the name of respecting the audience. And I just got to say, I think that's just real crap. I have tremendous respect for the network. Tremendous respect. But I just think it's disrespectful for anyone, myself included, to tell you what I don't believe because I'm afraid you might turn me off if I tell you what I think. And sadly, you know, there's something to be said for the number of people who will turn you off when you don't reaffirm their priors. People are too super sensitive and we live in postmodern times. Everybody has their own truth. They don't care about the truth. They just want to be affirmed. I got to tell you, I am not the guy to affirm you. And I don't think Fox should be either, frankly. I think just tell the truth. Let the chips fall. Now, related to this is somewhat uh, directly or indirectly. You know, for a very long time, I didn't have any gold advertisers on the program because it just wasn't my thing and I didn't think it was relevant. And we're kind of in that weird economy now where we've got 1970-style inflation and tumultuous stock markets and geopolitical turmoil. I thought, you know, I feel comfortable at this point saying some of you may have questions about gold. And, and now I know you do because you email me. And I wanted you to know that I've reached out and partnered with Advantage Gold because I felt comfortable recommending them because they were so good at answering my questions without knowing who I was at the time, without being gimmicky. They just gave me really good, honest answers of what would work, what wouldn't work, how I could structure an IRA for gold. Uh, no gimmicks whatsoever. I, I immediately liked them. They were such straight shooters. 800-450-2566 is their number. They are Trustlink's number one highest rated gold company seven years in a row. They've got the best prices, the best staff. They are deeply informative and educational when it comes to using precious metals for either an IRA or, or even a 401k or just your general investments. 800-450-2566 is the number. That's 800-450-2566. Call Advantage Gold. If you have any questions at all about using gold as part of your investment strategies, reach out to Advantage Gold, 800-450-2566. Welcome back. It is Eric Erickson here. If you text Eric, E-R-I-C-K, to 33777, click that top link. Get the daily email. Subscribe to it. You can uh, get my rundown on, on what all Rupert Murdoch said in his deposition and other things. Um, it is interesting to see how the media is out to just get Fox News when, you know, MSNBC does the same or worse than what Fox is alleged to do. Nobody cares because hardly anybody watches it. And when it does it, it takes the right framing for much of the American media. So they protect MSNBC. I've told you how deeply frustrated I am with so many justifications for uh, the, the Joe Biden unilaterally trying to forgive student loans. I want to read you two headlines. They're from the Washington Post editorial board, the same editorial board, two different headlines. This is from August of last year. Joe Biden's student loan announcement is a regressive, expensive mistake. Six months later, headline from yesterday, Joe Biden's overreach. Oh, Joe Biden overreached on student loans, but the court shouldn't stop him. That's right. Uh, it was a regressive, expensive mistake, but the court shouldn't stop him. Never mind. Um, my goodness gracious. Um, that's just absurd. That's the Washington Post for you, doing damage control for Joe Biden. Now that he's done it, don't stop him, court. Right or wrong, don't stop him. Yeah, stop him. It was the wrong unconstitutional thing for the president to do. He doesn't have that power. Sometimes the court has to do what's not popular with liberals, and they were always happy when they won, and now that they don't win so much, they're blasting it as conservatives as opposed to the rule of law. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo, and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. 
Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.